GE stacked washer and dryer unit. This video we're going to be covering the air codes, um, how to get to them, how to read them, and what they may need. This video is actually requested by some other folks that commented on another video of mine showing them how to get into diagnostics and actually how to use it a little bit. Um, so if you guys want to see that video on actually how to use diagnostics, I'll have that link down in the description below. This video is going to be covering getting into diagnostics, how to get the air codes off of this, and actually reading what those lines mean. And if that's what you're here for, stay tuned. We get right into it. Uh, no bull crap or anything like that here on this channel. So, um, yeah, let's get into it. All right, now, first thing we're doing is we're getting into diagnostics. So you hold start in the fabric softener button, and then you turn the dial um, down to the 6 o'clock position. Uh, wait a few seconds, let go of start and fabric softener, and light should blink like that, okay? Um, for the position for the error code, you want to go to the 3 o'clock position. Right now it's in 6, so going right to 3, and right there, that's what our error code is, which is nothing. If you're getting that on light, that's not an error code at all. And as you see here on my fancy little diagram here, um, that on light on the very top, everything else is off, means no errors exist. What I use for this, being a technician, um, which and when I actually went to go look at this washer, um, got air codes off of it, and that was the only thing. So this is an easy way, as a technician, to tell someone who thinks there's an issue with their washer and you don't find anything wrong. Um, this is a way to tell them, like, hey, your washer's even telling us that there's nothing wrong with this thing. So it's a good tool for us technicians and everything. So uh, just make sure there's not a problem by letting it fill, uh, seeing if it agitates, and draining and spinning. That's all these washers do, you guys. So, fill, agitate, drain, and spin. All right, uh, next air code. Loose belt air code. This is when the on light is illuminated and lid lock is illuminated. Now, what I would do in this situation is check the belt for wear, or it may be broke. So get down there, um, open up that front panel on this thing, and see if that belt is broken or something. So uh, if you've got a loose belt air code, that's where I'd start. Get down there and investigate that belt. Next air code. Blocked motor air code. This is where the on light and spin light is illuminated and all the others are off. Um, what I would do in this situation, check for motor obstruction. Um, that's checking something between the tub or down there in the motor. I had a, a comment on one of my videos before where someone was investigating another washer and they found um, bobby pins and stuff inside their motor. So there could be anything. Um, I've, I've seen washers where um, customer had critters. It was a, whether it was a squirrel or a rat or something. But in this particular case, I found dog food inside of the transmission. Again, it's a different washer, but you never know. I go out and I see random stuff all the time. So just investigate um, anything around the motor. See if there's something jamming it up, whether it's closed between the tub and the basket on the inside. Uh, make sure that basket spins freely. Um, just investigate any kind of obstruction um, in the motor area or anything the motor's connected to could be anything um, if you guys are experiencing something weird let me know in the comments I'd be happy to hear it and uh, yeah maybe I'll learn something new but anyways next air coat long fill um, what this looks like it has your on light illuminated along with spin in your lid lock um, and what long fill really means is your washer is not getting any water or it doesn't think it's getting any water so you want to start it um, make sure you're getting a good water flow and if you're not you want to check your water supply so that means take off your hoses in the back of this thing 
that's connected to that water valve right there. Um, turn them on and, you know, have a bucket, put the water into the bucket and make sure water is actually coming through. You want to do that on hot and cold. And if you have a problem there, you know, it's a plumbing issue and your washer is probably okay. Um, this is what your water should look like whenever you're running it in. So as long as you got good water flow coming in, um, you're probably looking at a pressure switch problem or something stuck in your diaphragm. And what I mean by diaphragm is this guy right here. That is your diaphragm. Um, extra soap can get stuck in it. Some debris can get stuck in it. And if you got something um, inside of there, it's not sending uh, the correct air signal up to your pressure switch. That's what that hose is that's connected to it. And it'll go up to your pressure switch, which is right there. So if you got any debris stuck in that diaphragm, um, that could cause this air as well. So it's not sensing that water coming into your machine. But if you don't have any water coming into your machine, um, you might be looking at the screens on your water valve or something like that. So check your water pressure, check the screens, and make sure that diaphragm is nice and clean. Um, another thing that can happen is your water can siphon um, out of your washer if your drain line is too far down the drain. So if you got water coming in and it's going out at the same time, then you're going to get this air code because it's not filling up in a certain amount of time because it wants to, I don't know, I'm just guessing here, but it wants to um, be satisfied within like 10 minutes or so. Uh, so if it's not um, noticing that water come in, um, you're going to get this air code. So you just got to investigate that. But anyways, next air code. All right, next air code is overfill air, which is the on light is illuminated along with wash, rinse, and lid locked. All right, most common issue with overfill airs is a stuck water valve. Uh, easiest way to find that out is turn your washer on, use it on warm water, and as it's filling, just unplug unplug the washer. If water keeps on coming in, I mean, it needs to stop immediately as soon as you unplug it. If it takes 10 seconds for it to shut off, 5 seconds for it to shut off, 3 minutes for it to shut off, automatically, bad water valve. That's the easiest thing to check when you have this overfill air is that water valve, making sure it's sticky. So, again, start your washer, use it on warm so your hot and your cold um, are coming, and just unplug it. If you keep having water come in, bad water valve. And whenever I run into these, um, it doesn't always happen the first try. You may have to try it a couple times. Um, so, yeah, just make sure uh, your water valves are good in this situation. And then the next thing we'll tackle would be a pressure switch problem. Um, if you go back to that earlier air code, you know, where the diaphragm is and you get that pressure hose going up to your pressure switch, um, it could just be a uh, reading wrong. Um, that's another thing I'd look for. It's really, it's not the easiest thing to test those things. Um, I don't really have any recommendations for you on how to do that in this video. That's going to be a more in-depth kind of thing, but, uh, for this issue, that water valve is most likely going to be your problem. Nine times out of ten, that's what it is. I change water valves on, on, out on these things. It feels like constantly. It's really common on uh, LGs and Samsung where the water valves are sticking. But I do see it on GEs and I do see it on Whirlpools. It's just not as common. But um, <clears throat> that's probably what you're dealing with if you have this air code. Though. Another thing it could be is a shorted relay on your control. Um, this would be harder to figure out as well, but it's one of those things that are possible. Um, harder to figure out because, I mean, this thing would be filling non-stop. And whenever you unplug it, it would stop. Um, and then when you plug it back in, it'll fill automatically. So um, you'll be looking at a control board in this type of situation. And then it could be too much soap. You know how we talked about how the diaphragm can have debris or something in it. Um, Soap can build up in that diaphragm and cause a false reading, so it could hold some pressure in there. So whenever it fills up with water, it'll 
make it think that it's overfilled instead of regularly filled. So if it's filling up to a regular amount and um, you're still getting this error, um, it's most likely either going to be your diaphragm needs to be cleaned out or you got a pressure switch issue. Um, one of the two. That, well, some control boards have pressure switch on them, but on this particular washer, there's an actual pressure switch. So um, look at your pressure switch and cleaning out that diaphragm. Anyways, next air code. Drain air. You got the on light illuminated along with the rinse light illuminated. And this could be a failed drain pump air, could be an obstruction in your pump like a sock or a bobby pin or you can have uh, no power to the uh, drain pump itself um, so whenever it's trying to run it's not running because it's not getting any power uh, but anyways most common I find on these GE washers is something stuck in it like a sock so you got to get down to that drain pump um, disconnect those hoses you also want to shop back all that water out because if you don't um, water's going to go everywhere. But when you get down to that pump, you take off those hoses, take the drain pump out, see if there's anything in it. If there's something in it, that's most likely your issue. If there's nothing in it, um, drain pump may have failed, especially if it's making like a, a, a rackety noise, like you know, something that's not normal. <laughs> what you want to hear is a something constant uh, rumble noise so if it's making some racket like uh, hitting some coins or something that might be inside uh, that drain pump then that's what you're looking at but anyways that's probably one of the easiest things to figure out on this is the drain air so um, we're just going to go on to the next air code all right next air code is your thermistor air that's where your on lights illuminated along with the rinse in the lid lock light. Um, these washers, they know the, the temperature of the water coming into the machine and it wants to see a certain temperature. So if you have it set to cold, it wants it to be cold. And if you have it set to hot, it wants it to be hot. And sometimes um, these new washers, they don't want to use a lot of hot water. So even if you have it set to hot, it won't be hot. So they'll put more cold water in there uh, so it doesn't use as much energy in hot water. You know, it's one of them um, energy guidelines that uh, these companies have to follow nowadays. But uh, um, what I'll do is make sure that the wiring and, the, and everything is okay. Um, once you check that, um, problems most likely in your thermistor. And if you get that thermistor and you change it out and everything seems to check okay or everything or you're still having the same issue, um, you're probably looking at a control problem. Um, I would get the thermistor first and then the control board next if you're getting this error. Um, not much to these. These are not very common either. So um, if you get it, check the wiring, get the thermistor, and if that don't do it, get a control board. That's the easiest way to do it on these things. But uh, next air code. Now, speed air. This is where you have the on light illuminated along with rinse and spin. And on these guys, you have a um, speed sensor located on the motor. So, if you guys are having speed issues and your motor is turning, um, you might be needing to replace that motor anyways because that speed sensor may have failed. Um, I don't know of a way to actually change out the speed sensor on these. I'm sure you can. But I can't tell you where to find the sensor or anything. So the uh, easiest thing to do would be get a motor for it. Um, yeah, these things know how fast they need to go. And it's looking for a, a certain RPM whenever this thing's in spin. So if you're getting this error, um, you got to make sure your harness is okay. Um, there's nothing... You know, getting chewed up by uh, a little rodent you may have or anything like that. So, check your harness. If that don't do it, you will probably need a motor. Either that or your control is not reading anything correctly. But uh, that's what I'd try first. Um, check your harness. Change out the motor. If that don't do it, it's going to be your control. 
Um, not a good way to actually test the speed sensors on these models like you can on whirlpools on uh, the tachometer test and stuff so um, yeah that's what I do in this situation all right these next three air codes they're for your lid lock you got the on rinse spin and lid locked the on and wash and there's one more coming up but all of these are pertaining to your lid switch um, and then you got on wash and spin all these are indicating that your lid lock has failed or your lid switch has failed and that is one common issue on these washers is these lid locks failing in the last month I think I've replaced three of them so uh, yeah if you have one of these errors you may even know you have this error uh, before you even um, check the air codes because your washer won't work but anyways um, if you're getting these air codes go ahead and replace that lid lock um, it's not too bad of a part it's actually pretty easy to replace on these things too as long as you know how to do it um, kind of sneaky on how they put it on there but it's pretty nice if you know what you're doing but anyways if you're getting these air codes uh, having a lid lock issue and uh, next air code now we are to the dreaded failed control air codes I got them all uh, lined up here for you so you'll they'll all have the on light on they will all have the wash light and on one it's you know spin and lid lock the other one rinse and the other one rinse spin and lid lock all these indicate that you have a bad control um, the only thing you can do is just get a new control um, pretty cut and dry depending on how much you want to spend um, these control boards can be somewhat high so go ahead and look it up see how much it'll cost if it'll be worth it to you on these laundry centers um, I know these things cost around a thousand dollars so you guys might want to go ahead and get that control for it but um, if you're getting these air codes um, I'm showing here go ahead and get yourself a control board and that should take care of your issue um, there are times where you'll need something else because um, maybe you have a shorter drain pump or something and that shorter drain pump caused your control to go out and so you may have an underlying issue somewhere um, but something internally on your control board has failed and you just need to replace it and that's what these air codes right here indicate so um, that's all the air codes on this machine here so uh, I do hope this has helped everybody I know I've had uh, some requests for these and <laughs> This video has taken me a long time to make, and uh, I apologize for that, but I hope this helps somebody out there, and if this does help, give me a like, subscribe, and I appreciate y'all watching.